Well, we're going to attempt to cut it with this. I don't know. Maybe I should turn it on its side. We'll see how this works. So I know that we said we were going to release the last of the solstice winners on Monday, but you know, I've been having so much fun with the family and just being cozy and hanging out and playing with our Christmas presents. It actually involves a lot of family connectivity, like Lego sets and new video games. We got Just Dance 2023, having a great time that I just didn't want to come film. And so I've been taking it easy with the family because we very rarely get like a chunk of days all together. So I've been doing that. So now it's Wednesday, but we are going to be doing the final of the solstice winners today. And it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to tell you all about today's winner. And I will do so in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week seven of year three and winner number three of the Solstice Challenge for Project Soapway. Now, in case you're not familiar with what Project Soapway is, every couple weeks or whatever, I drop a new Project Soapway challenge to the Sudzers, to the membered Sudzers right now, and that challenge can be any number of things. And then they design their bar, think about what they need to do, read the brief, they make the soap, they film the soap, they film the cut, then they submit a picture to my moderators, either on the Discord or in you know my business. And then the moderators and the admins all take all of those pictures, they compile them, and they send them to me and the jury, and we all decide, completely based on the pictures alone. So we have no idea what Sudzers made what soap. And this is the final in the Solstice line, and this is from Miss D. She actually goes by a lot of names in the world of YouTube and social media and Discord. And I know her as D. You might know her on Discord as Pain, as in Major. Seriously though, D, is that where that came from? Because that's hilarious. But anyway, D is an amazing human, one of my favorite people on the planet. I know I say it a lot, but I have a lot of favorites, and she has been an OG Sudzer for a very long time. And I love everything about Dee. She has a very cool personality. It's a no-nonsense type personality. She's been through life. She's experienced a lot of things, and that comes across in her personality and the way that she, you know, deals with the world. She's also a very funny Sudzer, so I always enjoy that for sure. But from the soaping perspective, she's a very meticulous Sudzer in that she thinks about absolutely everything that she's going to make, asks all the questions, has a game plan, plan of attack from the beginning, no matter what, before she executes. And that is wildly different from how I approach the soap making world and I find it really, really refreshing to see. And when I say she asks a lot of questions, I mean it. There are certain knowns in my life every morning the things that are going to happen. I know that I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I know that I'm going to grab my switch and check in on my villagers, both in DDV and Animal Crossing. And I know that I'm going to check Discord and have a message from D, asking a question about something she's working on. And I love that. The day that comes that I don't have a message from D will be a very sad day indeed, because I love the way she works on all problems in front of her. She collects all information, 
thinks about all of the possible avenues and then attacks. And it's amazing. And her solstice soap absolutely reflects that. Now, remember for the solstice line, these are hybrid soaps, which means a combination of cold process and melt and pour. Or, you know, cold process and soap dough, cold process, hot process, whatever. A hybrid soap. And she actually has a really cool take on the solstice, you know, submission because she has a lot of very bright colors going on with all of this. Whereas my bar was, my bar was that. So that's fun. And Karen's bar was the better version of that, which is also fun. And Miss A's bar was, you know, also blue and whites. Miss D is going with all of the colors. So she has browns and oranges and yellows and greens and blues. Absolutely fabulous. Really, really beautiful and thoughtful, you know, process with the soap. And one of the things I was most impressed by was her video when she sent it through for me to edit. Now, D being D, she's always very hard on herself. So she told me and everybody in the Discord multiple times how awful the footage was and apologize for it. And so I was not really looking forward to editing her footage. I, I, she warned me. And so I didn't want to open it up. And when I opened it up, I was absolutely just blown away. I was so impressed because it was all in a zip file, multiple parts. She had like 12 different segments of videos chunked out, made it so easy to edit, to find, you know, this is the pour, this is, you know, the prep, this is the cut, all of the things. And it was actually so delightful to edit this footage. So I'm very much looking forward to you seeing it and, you know, really giving Dee all of the love in the world. Because while she has been a sudzer for a very long time, she's been doing all of this soaping and, you know, body care, lotions, et al., all the cosmetics as a hobby. And while she has been thinking about starting her business for quite a while, she's just now at the place where she's starting to actually execute those plans as well. So she is a brand new business soaper. Even though she's had her design of her business and all of the ideas for all the product lines that she wants to do firmly in her head for a very long time. So let's get to the video to Dee's gorgeous, gorgeous solstice bar. I can ooh and on gush over her a little bit more and we can explore all things self allure and Wix, which is the name of her brand spanking new business. So let's go do that. So today we have Miss D, and Miss D is an extraordinary human across the board, and I am just absolutely blown away by all of this footage and this finished soap and her cutter and all of the things. She recently decided to start a business with all of this because she has been doing it as a hobby, and so Self Allure and Wix is going to be her business, but we have no socials no way to really promote her at this point as far as, you know, click link and go support. But the second that we do, I'll be putting that on, you know, the community tab so you can go do that thing because we're all just so incredibly proud of D. But also understand that it's important to not push yourself in any of this because as I said in the last video, starting a business is a lot. It's a lot. It's not just making the soap. It's literally every other aspect of it. And I don't want anybody to feel burnt out for any reason with this. I don't want anyone to ever lose the love of making stuff. And Miss D has the love of making stuff, like all of the stuff. She has so many amazing ideas for the soaps that she makes and the balms that she makes and the lotions that she makes and everything. And she also has, you know, her signature colors in mind for her business, like copper is her signature color, right? That That's hers, it is all hers. And she has these great ideas to put into motion. And then when you see them actually in motion, like you see her having come up with this wild game plan, asked a whole bunch of questions from a whole bunch of other people trying to get, you know, the best, you know, plan of attack. And then she executes it. And I am just blown away. Like this entire thing is just so fearless and flawless with this soap pour and, you know, obviously the finished product. And it's just wild, like starting with just doing a heat transfer method, which is very, very smart, very cool way to melt down your solid oils. Take your hot lye solution, which she did, put it in with her solid oils, 
And then she went ahead and put her liquid oils into all of that. And now she's mixing it up and doing the awesome emulsion check there, which I love to see. But I honestly think that I have shown or talked about, you know, a heat transfer method maybe three times over the course of, you know, two plus years on the channel. So seeing the Sudzers take a different method, find something that works for them and going with that is absolutely amazing. And that's, you know, kind of what this whole thing is and what I, th I hope all Sudzers sort of glean from this community and from my videos or whatever, these are guidelines. These are, this is the way that works for me, but that doesn't mean that this is the one way to make soap. There are lots of ways to do it. And one of those ways to do it is actually Miss D is going to be taking that stir stick back to her, her soap batter there because she wants to thicken it up because she's going to be doing some sculpted layers on top of all of the other stuff that's going on with this hybrid soap. And I never do that. She's doing it anyway which is amazing because that works better for her soap design. She's using good and not lazy soap techniques, really. Okay, and on to the pour of this. And as I said, she is going to be doing some sculpted layers with this. So it looks like she has created a sculpting tool out of, you know, a hard piece of plastic. And she's going to be rolling with that for certainly one layer but maybe both of them and she's also taking her stir stick back to the bottom layer like i said she's working smarter than i do and i love it and d is actually one of these really amazing humans in my life that actually is a very very smart person and she has the skill set she has the talent and she's always i don't know questioning herself and uh, just making sure that she's not going to mess anything up. And I've yet to see her mess anything up. And so it's so wild watching all of this, you know, actually come to fruition, like watching her actual process, her pour, because I've been the person that's been in, you know, DMs with her or in group threads or whatever, talking about a certain product that she's making. And she's convinced that she's going to do it wrong. Or she posts a picture of the finished product, you know, in the Discord and, you know, says that it's wrong, that it's awful. And it's never wrong or awful. And so actually watching the process of making it, I'm hoping to get some information as to why she thinks any particular pour went wrong. But so far, I'm not seeing it. Like, that sculpting was beautiful. The thickness of that batter is perfect for the sculpting. And now she's going to put the other color on and look, the other color is still nice and fluid beautiful she's not having to glob stuff into the the mold because it you know took too long to get the bottom layer to firm up and so the stuff that was still in the container got hard you get it nothing wrong with this pour nothing wrong with her process so far so again i think this is probably an issue of d being overly hard on herself and i get that that is kind of the story of my life i am my own worst critic and i think we can all relate to that but D, stop it. Like, knock it up. This is amazing. Everything that I've seen you do has been amazing. And I know it's been thoughtful and carefully considered before you actually make the thing because you put in all of the research before you even start mixing anything. It's absolutely incredible. So yes, that would be my big takeaway from all of this. Were I you? And that would be, you know, to give myself a little more grace for sure. But yeah, so that's actually an interesting thing too. She's spraying down the top of the cold process with the rubbing alcohol. And that's not something that I don't think I've ever done. But as we saw in the tea soaps video with like the really weird mica line that was created using just a slurry of rubbing alcohol and mica, you can totally have extra, you know, rubbing alcohol in the batch of soap and nothing's going to go weird. So I love that. Love what she's done here. So it looks like we have two different colors of brown on the bottom and now she's going yellow on an angle, filling into those areas for her sculpting. So she did sculpt both layers. Love to see that. And then she's going to be flipping this around after it dries because melt and pour, man, takes forever to dry. I usually pop it into the freezer to make that firm up enough so I can pour the next one. But since she's working on an angle, you can only move it so much. And now, yep, gonna flip it around and do another color, which looks like green, is coming up next. So I love that. This is a very brightly colored bar for Solstice. And remember, as I told you, you know, earlier 
during the series, I did not really give any specific parameters. Like it had to be a nighttime winter solstice soap. It could have been bright summer solstice. It could have been, again, reasonably anything as long as it was a hybrid, which again, I was reminded because you guys all did it right. So that's good. Yep, we got the green coming up here. And the final layer of this, actually, I think I lost this footage. And I'm so like mad at myself that I lost this footage because for all the shit that Dee was talking about how terrible the edits were going to be, like her video was a big hot mess, she provided me with like 12 different files in a zip drive, like she zipped them all, very professional, with different stages of the, you know, pour process and the cut, all, you know, kind of chunked out to make it really easy to edit. So again, that she it was not a disaster at all. This was the most delightful edit I've done yet because it was all so well organized and I lost the blue footage. Let's go on to the cut. And on to the cut of this. And as you can see, we've got the blue and you know, the yellow and uh, oh, did I lose the orange footage too? God, what is wrong with me? So she has a lot going on in the soap. So you're definitely gonna look forward to this cut, right? But really what you're going to look forward to first is her freaking cutter. Now this is a DIY project for her. And look at that. What a clever way to do a cutter. I am 100% here for that. And she was actually talking with her daughter who's there kind of in frame a little bit about how she is hoping to get herself one of those proper cutters from Bud or whoever soon, but this is awesome. And if she wasn't cutting Melton Pour, which is, you know, really, really hard soap and can be just a bear to cut through, especially with a wire, this would have been perfect. Like this would have been just like butter gone through the soap all the way to the counter. Would have been amazing. I am just completely blown away with how thoughtful and really fun this cutter is. Like that's really fun. And yeah, she just, she just came up with this thing. She, she saw us with our, you know, multi-bar cutters or whatever, and she built her version of it that works for her. Got those L angles, angles going on. She's got everything spaced out with her perfect little one inch. This is perfect. Isn't that cutter cool? Also, I'm sorry that you're having to work so hard to cut this, D, because Milton Poor be a lot, and I'm very sorry about that with the hybrid soaps, but yeah, let us know in the comments how this works for your regular cold process soaps. Because I'm telling you, you cut those, you know, within a day of pouring your regular cold process soaps with this, you don't even need another cutter. And I kind of like the idea of taking just one piece of, you know, this whole thing and just slamming it onto a loaf. I just did that, like I mimed it. Yeah, I want to do that. This is really cool. And this is yet another example of the maker lifestyle, the thing that we all do, the thing that we all love. We like to use our hands in our brains and crazy projects in order to create, you know, something awesome. So not only do we get a crazy awesome soap with all of this, we also get a crazy awesome cutter. Like, isn't that just so clever? Well done. And I expect nothing less from Dee, honestly. I, what I did not expect though, if I can scold a little bit, is for you, you know, bringing your grandson over for, oh, look how excited I am. I made new soap. And then you immediately saying, no, it's a fail. Baby, it's not a fail. You did an incredible job. Look at that soap. That is absolutely stunning. Maybe it didn't look the way that you had envisioned it, but you've been around for so long. You know that none of these things are fails. This is a beautiful soap, and I'm so proud of you for having won the solstice. I love your soap making skills. I love your videography skills. And look at that. I also love your photography skills. She did that too. Everybody tell Dee what an amazing job she did. And there you have it, Dee's submission for the Solstice Soap, and you can totally see why she won. It's a gorgeous take, it's a gorgeous bar, and I am in love with her brain coming up with that DIY cutter. Absolutely extraordinary. Like, when I saw that in her footage, I'm like, oh my god, wow, I, I need a tutorial for that. And then we can fiddle with, you know, things that might not work as well to really... I think that's perfect. That's such a cool idea. And if she wasn't cutting melt and pour with it, I think it would have just gone through like butter. That is such a fun idea. Clever idea. Well done. And I loved your soap and I love the thought process behind it. I loved that you had your, your daughter involved in all of this. I love to hear all of the sounds of like life happening around you while you're making the soap. 
I loved it when you called your grandson over to show your grandson your new bar of soap, your new batch of soap. What I didn't super love was that you were a little bit too hard on yourself. There is nothing that is a failure about this soap. It was amazing. And I want you to have more confidence in what it is that you're doing. Because all the times that we have interacted on Discord, on the Zoom calls, in our DM threads, all of the things, you always show how talented you actually are. You get this. You understand this process. You're good at it. And this was not a failure by any stretch of the imagination. So keep at it. And for the business side, you know, do that when you feel comfortable. As I have said multiple times within these Project Soapway videos, it is not a requirement to be a professional soap maker like you do this as a business to submit. You can just be a person that loves making handcrafted stuff and right now you're into the soapy things. And I will still give you a shout out and call out all of your amazing talents. But to that, Dee is planning on getting all of her socials up and ready to go. So when that happens, we will definitely be posting in the community tab or a short or the like to give all the socials so we can go, you know, give her all of the love and help support her in the soapy business journey whenever she feels comfortable doing it. Seriously, Sudzers, don't ever push yourself too hard. Burnout is a thing in all areas of life. But when that happens, I will definitely be letting you all know. For now, go down to the comment section. Tell Dee what an amazing job she did, because she really did. In the Discord, tell her what an amazing job she did, because she really did. And yeah, give her all of the love and the encouragement in the world. Everything that she has shown the Sudzer community has been absolutely amazing. And so I really like watching her continue to evolve in her process and gain more confidence in herself and her ability to do this because she can do this and she did do this and you're awesome and I love you so very much. So keep doing all of the things for sure. Sudzers, thank you so much for joining me today for, you know, Wednesday. It's the holiday week. I hope you guys have had like the best holiday season. I hope you had lots of fun food and fun laughs and good times over, you know, the Christmas season thing. Hope you're having an amazing Wednesday. I will be back tomorrow for sure with my Christmas soaps. Actually, we're starting my Christmas soaps tomorrow, even though it's well past Christmas. And we're going to talk about that burnout and how it actually impacted, you know, me this season or, you know, arguably the entire time that I've been in business while I showcase the soaps that never actually made it to the public eye for retail sales this year for the holidays. So that'll be fun. But again, I am very, very glad that you joined me. Sudzers, you guys are amazing. You are so very important to me. And I know that I've done this a million times before. And thanking you for keeping me here. But thank you for keeping me here. You guys are incredible. And as we're getting to the end of the year, and I'm reflecting back on everything that we have done this year together, individually, all of the stories that we've shared, the experiences that we've shared, the friendships that we've made. It's amazing. It's something that makes me super tear up and get emotional. And I don't want to cry today. I want to go play Just Dance. So I will save the Just Crying for maybe New Year's Eve. I'm not sure. All of you guys go enjoy the rest of your Wednesday or time zone. For the Australian Sudzers, I guess that's Thursday by the time this comes out. Yes. And uh, yeah, keep being awesome. But don't forget, again, to give Miss D all of the love because she is amazing and she is deserving of all of it. I'm out of here. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.